All right, so the first thing we want to do with this fan is bench test it to see if we're getting um, if we're getting all the power to it and see if it actually is if, if it's working on the bench then it's not um, the connection to the bike that's the pro the pro it could be the connection to the bike that's a problem if it's not working on the bench um, then we'll take it apart and clean it um, so we'll hook up some jumpers to this battery right here and if you look at this connector the side that's closest to the clip is the negative side the side that's and the other side is the positive side so we're going to use some jumpers here again the side closest to the clip is the negative hook that up and then we'll hook the jumper to the hot side and we'll come over here to the battery And hook that up, and we'll see if the fan turns. And as you can see, and this is what it was doing on the, on the bike, it is trying to turn, but not quite making it. Try it one more time. See that it's trying to turn. So we're going to take it apart and clean it up and see if we can get it to run some better. Okay, so we'll start by taking off these three screws that hold the fan onto the radiator. And make sure you take note where your ground wire is because this radiator is isolated with rubber mounts. So it has to be separately grounded um, so that the fan will run. And that's a common problem when your fan is misbehaving, the first thing you check is to see if this ground wire is actually grounded. Put that aside. This is a 10 millimeter wrench, by the way. So <clears throat> next we'll take these three screws off. out for these little inserts. Try and keep them with the screws. <clears throat> and then next we'll take this nut off. We need an eight millimeter wrench. Try not to hold on, try to hold on to the center of it so that you're not stressing the, the fan blades. Like that. So next we'll gently separate the motor from the fan housing. As you can see already, 
There's a lot of rust in there. It must have gotten wet at some point. So we're going to have to clean that up. Next, we're going to take these two screws out right here. brushes are gonna the brushes inside are spring loaded so they are gonna want to pop out so you just got to be careful go nice and slow and when you come out to the brushes just watch and make sure you don't lose the springs and then also wire harness right there. And then you can see there's your contact surface and the brushes right there. And then, as you can see this housing is corroded on the inside. Next we're just going to separate this. And as you can see the brushes are starting to pop forward. And right there went one of the springs. Make sure we get a hold of that. See the spring? Mm -hmm. Side. And it actually looks like this one brush here is stuck. So that would be presenting a problem. If that brush isn't making contact, then it's not creating the electric that we need. Now, if you can look close, you can actually see first of all that this spring that came out isn't in the best shape that we might want to replace um, with a similar spring you could uh, you could probably use the spring from a ballpoint pen just make sure that it's the right length um, or um, get a uh, get a brush kit but in this case I think I'm just going to be able to clean this sucker up um, you can also see that on the brush itself um, there's some corrosion that was making that stick and probably not making very good contact. And then <clears throat> if you look at the motor itself, there's quite a bit of there's quite a bit of scoring on the and we'll just sand that up, make sure that that's good. And then there's also some corrosion here. Um, we'll just give it a general cleaning and then we'll come back and put it back together. One little note, if you can see down here at the bottom, there are two small uh, shims. I don't want to call them, they're, they're washers basically. Um, you need to take them out and not lose them because they actually shim up to the right height. So we're going to just flip this over and pop them out. You see they're actually like one's metal and one's an insulator. And the metal one goes on the bottom and the insulator goes in between. So we'll just set them over there. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is take some distilled vinegar, and just have it in a dish here and a toothbrush. And you can see, that'll clean up that rust. You can leave it soak, um, but then the toothbrush will help you get that rust off, if you can see that. Now the key thing is, and we'll do that same thing for this housing right here, we'll leave that soak. Add a little bit more vinegar to that. And 
the key here is to that it doesn't matter if you necessarily get this wet with vinegar um, as long as later on you come back and let it completely dry before you uh, put it back together. So we'll let that soak, let's say about an hour, and uh, we'll come back and see what we get. Go ahead. All right, now that we've got everything cleaned up, you can see I've got the brushes back in place. And uh, one of the tricks I like to use is to push, you push the brush all the way in, and then you just take a piece of masking tape or some sort of tape and you press it down on top so that it holds it in place. This is all, cl this is all cleaned up and I uh, gave this a little sanding and a little brushing just to clean that contact area. So now that should hold that brush out of the way for the most part while we reinsert this. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All we, have to need, all we have to do there is just pull the brush out of the way and wiggle this down in place. And then we can take the tape off. And we're all cleaned up and ready for action. Try it. Okay, keep it right like that, I guess. Good focus. There we go. Okay. And the next step is we'll take these washers that we had and we'll put them on the end of the shaft. Right here. Insert this back into the housing, and remember, you got to line up the wire with the notch and fight the magnets as you go in. Make sure you don't let your brushes pull out of position. Slide it back into place, right like that. All right, so uh, next, of course, we'll put the two screws back in. Make sure it's seated down nice and tight. That's one. Two. put the motor back in the housing. Okay. And put its screws back in. And just as a side note, we uh, after we let the uh, part soak in vinegar, I used a, uh, a toothbrush to brush off everything I could get to, and then we used the air compressor to help us blow it off and dry it off so that it was nice and dry before we reassembled it. Those three. Good 
tight, but I don't want to stress on those fan blades. Okay. And now we're ready to bench test it. Alright, so again, we will uh, put the ground on the connector that's side towards the clip. And put the hot jumper on the other side. Obviously it's working. Beautiful.